Okay, welcome everyone. I'm just getting my screen set here a little bit. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today at um, our Northwestern admission session. Um, I need to clarify, do I have my, can everyone see me, um, my speaker setting? For some reason I'm getting gallery view. Okay. Um, so my name is Christy Callahan, and I'm so excited to join you from, I'm sure, all across the world that you're joining us from right now. Um, I'm here in Chicago, um, which is just south of um, Evanston, our home campus area, which we'll dig into later. Um, I'm one of the associate directors of admission at Northwestern, and I'm in charge of global partnerships and outreach, which means I have the great privilege of representing Northwestern all over the globe. I've had the privilege of representing Northwestern in about 45 different countries. So I can um, assure you that your um, classmates will be some of the best and brightest from all over the globe. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about why we value that at Northwestern in a little bit. Um, but today um, I'm gonna deliver a little bit more of the facts and figures and things like that. And then one of our students is going to join us um, to deliver more of like the student experience and from his perspective. So I'm gonna let Zach introduce himself now. Uh, awesome, thanks Christy. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Zach and I am a recent graduate and current admissions counselor uh, here at Northwestern. So I was class of 2020 where I majored in economics and got a minor in both psychology and business institutions. Uh, so at Northwestern, I definitely had a more business oriented mindset where uh, I tried to take advantage of as many career and oriented activities that I possibly could have. Um, but beyond that, I also got super involved outside business and outside the classroom and lots of other areas. Uh, one of my favorite parts of Northwestern uh, actually had to do with the Big Ten. I was a huge part of Northwestern Wildside, uh, which is in charge of the student section for every single game day. Uh, the Northwestern Wildcats are the premier Division I uh, Big Ten football team, basketball team, baseball team, you name it. And one of the biggest advantages of going to Northwestern, not only do you get a world-class education, but you get to go to every single sporting event for free, and you also get a front of free t-shirts and free clothing. Um, so that was one of my favorite parts of Northwestern as well. Uh, but with that being said, super excited to help you guys learn a little bit more about Northwestern today here with Christy. So with that being said, I'll turn it back to Christy to talk uh, more about Northwestern and our academic opportunities. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Zach. Um, it's definitely great to have you here to share some of that purple pride, especially from the wild side view, which is um, kind of pulsing through the veins of campus. Um, I just want to remind everyone that today you're getting to see Zach and I on YouTube, um, but we do have um, some live uh, tours available as well. So you can hop online and, and register for those. So although we can't have you in person and we can't really be here um, in person with you. This is as close as we can get, and we think it's a great alternative. So we have actual tour guides that will be giving those tours. We also have recordings of that and tons of really amazing um, footage of specialized kind of um, information sessions that are on our Northwestern YouTube page. So definitely check that out. We've been putting a lot of effort into um, personalizing some of those perspectives for you during this unprecedented time. So um, I'm going to start talking about Northwestern um, just in general. Our population, we do believe that um, we have what's called a global reach. We have about 8,000 undergraduate students. Um, they come from over 90 different countries around the globe, um, just in our undergraduate population alone. So um, we think diversity of thought enriches the academic environment, and not just globally, but domestically. We have students from all 50 um, states here in the United States. Um, we have an incredibly diverse array of um, backgrounds and perspectives. Um, that we really believe our small discussion-based courses um, allow each student to have the ability to engage with others from a variety of different perspectives. So that's why we really value um, the type of diversity we have. We believe we're one of the most diverse universities in the United States in terms of socioeconomic, racial backgrounds, religious beliefs, um, and just lifestyle. Um, we have a lot of students interested in a lot of different things, and that en enhances the student experience at Northwestern. Um, so with those 8,000 undergraduate students, we would be um, bringing in about 2,000 students who will march through the arts for a big celebration where we welcome you into our community, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But the lived experience at Northwestern is not quite as regimented as you might think. Um, we have six different colleges and schools at, at Northwestern, and we do ask you to identify which one is most interesting to you at the time of application. 
However, once you're at Northwestern and once you're enrolled, we welcome you to study in any of those six colleges and schools. So the lived experience of a Northwestern student is not very compartmentalized as the six colleges might suggest. In fact, each student will create their own Northwestern journey. Um, a couple examples of this is our, um, our, our McCormick School of Engineering actually has a series of coursework per for the first year engineers, colleges um, engineering first. Um, our students in the Weinberg College of Arts and Science um, get to um, do distribution areas where they pick two courses in each of the six distribution areas. So you have a lot more autonomy over kind of what's pulling you in different directions intellectually and what stimulates you as a student. So we don't have just like a bland core curriculum where every single student is going to have the same learning experience. We really want you to personalize that learning experience and take control over your own learning. Um, we do have what we think is one of the most unique programs of engineering in the country because of our, our whole brain engineering approach in McCormick. There's 13 disciplines. Um, our Weinberg College of Arts and Science, uh, the largest major is economics, but we have over eight different ways to study business at Northwestern in four or five of the different six schools at Northwestern. So check out Roads to Business. It's um, a website that you can check out all of those opportunities. One of those is actually in the School of Education and Social Policy called Learning and Organizational Change. So that might surprise you a little bit. We have a conservatory style program of music at Northwestern, but it's not conservatory in the traditional sense, meaning we want our musicians to also be able to double major or take minors outside of the school while receiving that really hands-on first one-on-one um, -on -one attention in the Beenham School of Music. And then finally, we're the only school in the top 10 in the United States to have an undergraduate college completely devoted to journalism which I think makes it very exciting. We even have a certificate in there that allows our students to, from outside of journalism to kind of tap into that specialty called Integrated Marketing and Communication Certificate. And then we're one of only two schools that have an undergraduate college completely devoted to communication. So anything from radio, television, film, all the way over to human communication sciences and disorders. Um, and of course, our wonderful theater program in between. So that's a little glimpse about the overall academic setup at Northwestern. But to give you a few more examples of this, Zach's gonna chime in to kind of talk about the lived experience. Absolutely, thank you so much. So as Chrissy just said, uh, and you couldn't have said it any better. There's just literally so many different academic opportunities at Northwestern. We kind of have a perfect mix of, you know, liberal arts, of social sciences, of the arts, humanities, the engineering, you name it. Uh, and you can easily take advantage of so many of these different opportunities while studying literally in any of the six schools. So I graduated uh, again just a few months ago with a Bachelor of Arts in Economics from the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences, uh, but I still actually took classes in four out of the six schools. I wanted to get to all six. Unfortunately, I just couldn't get there in time, uh, but I know tons of people who've actually been able to check off every single one of the six schools uh, while studying here at Northwestern. And as Christy also said, there's no required class really at Northwestern that you have to take. Up uh, instead, we oftentimes will follow distribution requirements where instead of taking standard class, you have to take two classes in six different areas that come out to 12 in total. Um, so this not only allows you to take classes that you're truly passionate and interested in, but it allows you to step outside of your comfort zone and take interesting classes that you don't think you necessarily would have taken initially, uh, but you absolutely fall in love with. So for example, my friend Sammy Akawi, uh, his sophomore fall, he took an introduction to cognitive science class, absolutely fell in love with it. And then he actually became a double major of cognitive science with economics, uh, where he has a very strong in, uh, interest in artificial intelligence. So at the end of the day, no matter what you do at Northwestern, uh, you can pursue your passions, but you can also pick up a ton of new interests uh, and really carry it forward as much as you could possibly ever want or desire. Uh, one thing I do want to note, though, as, is as I talk about all these different stories and experiences here at Northwestern, and I talk about my friends, it will sound like we have everything together. And that, at the end of the day, is because we're all seniors or we just graduated and we had time to figure things out. Um, but Northwestern truly caters to two different types of opportunities, uh, two types of students. There are the students who come into Northwestern super sure of what they want to do and just stick with it. But then there are also students out there, the far majority of students actually, who come in pretty unsure of what they want the four years to look like. And Northwestern truly caters and experience them to help them figure out what to do, how to get there, and how to just find their passions. So I want to talk about these two types of people a little bit more explicitly. First one being the type of student who comes in, knows what they want to do, and just runs with it. So my friend Andrew, he came in uh, three and a half years ago, or three years ago, 
Uh, he's a rising senior now. And he knew he wanted to eventually go work for ESPN. Uh, so he came in, he started studying journalism uh, in the uh, uh, Medill School of Journalism uh, and Integrated Marketing and Communications. Uh, but then he also pursued a lot of side interests as well. So he became a sideline reporter for the Northwestern Wildcats football team. Uh, he became an IM football coordinator as well. Uh, and then he also actually was going to intern at ESPN this summer. Unfortunately, some of those plans got shifted a little bit, uh, but he still got some really cool opportunities with it. Uh, so we knew what he wanted to do, and he pursued it, and Northwestern just gave him these opportunities. Uh, but then there's also the type of student who comes in, is unsure. And with that, I want to talk about myself, actually. Uh, in high school, I was super interested in business, but that was just because I watched Shark Tank in high school. I honestly didn't really know anything about business or what it could mean or what I could do with it. So when I came to Northwestern, I was undecided, like 50% of our students. But what I did do was I talked to my first year advisor. I would meet with him about once to twice a month to talk about all these different opportunities. And one of the first thing he recommended to me was that I reach out to the head of the econ department, who also just happened to be the uh, head of, uh, who happened to also be the professor of the biggest econ class at Northwestern called Econ 201. So I ended up signing up for that class. And then I would go to his office hours almost every week. And with that, we would just talk about economics. We would talk about job opportunities. We would talk about life. And he just got me super interested in economics. And he helped me figure out what type of path that I would want. Uh, and he helped me figure out my passion for consulting, which is the industry I'll be pursuing in about a month once my job actually starts. Um, and just at the end of the day at Northwestern, there are so many professors, advisors, and faculty members out there who want to help you figure out how to get from point A to point B. What I love to say is Northwestern is not a sink or swim environment, but is absolutely a place where everyone there wants to help you figure everything out. And with a six to one faculty to student ratio, and with 80% of our classes having 20 students or fewer, you will have so many opportunities to create incredibly close connections with these professors, with these faculty members who will then guide you along the way. So with that being said, I wanna turn it now back to Christy to talk a little bit more about a quarter system and how our professors and our faculty can truly guide you along the way. Thank you, Zach. Um, so yeah, the quarter system is going to allow you to kind of navigate Northwestern and all these multitude of opportunities that we have for you. And I like that Zach introduced the concept that like you don't always come in knowing how to create a double major or a minor or a certificate or even knowing what certificates are. But the quarter system uniquely allows our students to, to make this successful for them and personalize. The quarter system means that instead of two um, semesters, we have three academic quarters that make up our traditional academic school year. I know what you're thinking, three does not equal four, which is a quarter, right? Um, the quarter, the extra quarter is in the summer and that's largely optional for students. Students can do research or study abroad or take courses on campus during that, that summer session. But typically what it's like is um, 10 weeks of fall, winter and spring. The other benefit to the quarter system that I hear from our students a lot is that in between each quarter, you have true breaks. So when you go home or when you're off of school, um, not enrolled in classes, you actually have already finished all of your coursework for fall when you go home for that winter holiday. Um, you're not studying or kind of finishing up exams or turning things in. Um, and also um, the same thing's true for spring break. Um, so your breaks are true breaks. Um, it, after your winter courses have concluded, you write your exam, turn in all your final stuff, and then that week off is really truly done um, because you're completely wrapped up with those courses that you took in the winter. Um, and that makes it a little bit easier, I think, on students. Um, it also helps you navigate um, taking a little bit more of flexibility uh, approach. Um, so instead of, um, uh, or in each quarter, you're gonna take four or five courses per quarter. Um, what it allows you to do over four years time, if you kind of do the math, is you're gonna take eight to 10 more courses at Northwestern than you would at a semester system. Now you might think I'm crazy to ask you to be excited about taking more courses, but um, believe me in university, especially with all the opportunities at Northwestern, those eight to 10 courses can turn out to be um, a minor or certificate. It can give you the flexibility to change your mind if all of a sudden you get involved in a topic that wasn't what you thought it was. Um, and so again, we have those uh, faculty at your disposal to help you navigate that, but the quarter system really is built in um, to help you navigate that too. 
So over 70% of our students have more than one concentration at Northwestern, and over 50% of students actually change their academic concentration over the time that they're there. And so this uh, quarter system really allows that flexibility that I think our students have learned to love. Also, if it's a course that you just aren't that excited about, it's over a little bit quicker. But also, if it's a course that you just love and your professor is just um, someone that you really bonded with, you actually have more time to take more classes with those professors, right? Build a deeper relationship for recommendations and career advice and things like that. Um, so I do think the quarter system is highly valued by Northwestern students for those reasons. I did mention the concentrations. Um, so let's move into academic programs real quick. Um, Northwestern has um, those different combinations. So a major, a minor, or certificate. I'm just gonna quantify that for you a little bit. Um, a certificate is anywhere from four to six courses. They tend to be kind of a series of courses or a neatly packaged group of courses that we want to, you to achieve in order to grab like a, a certain skill set um, under your belt. Something that even you can put on your resume as marketable. So the Integrated Marketing Communication Certificate in the School of Journalism is incredibly popular. We have entrepreneurship certificates, civic engagement certificates, um, a global health certificate. Um, really a huge spectrum of certificates, but that's a, a really great bonus piece um, and it easily fits in that eight to 10 additional courses that you get in the quarter system. A minor is anywhere from six to nine courses. Um, so a little bit more of a commitment there and a little bit more freedom as to how you will combine different courses to create your minor, but it can really complement your primary area of study um, very um, solidly. And all of a sudden you might just be interested in an area that you decide to kind of pick up a few more classes and it turns into a minor. Um, a major is anywhere from 11 to 17 courses at Northwestern, so definitely a bigger time commitment. But an important thing to know, again, about the flexibility at Northwestern is there's no walls or barriers between the six different colleges and schools. So we do allow students to, to double major or major outside of their primary college. Um, there's, uh, you'll work with your advisor on how to do that. And you can also take minors or certificates outside of your primary college of study. And so we really want that liberal studies coursework um, and kind of specialized con uh, concentrations to um, give you the flexibility to take your own Northwestern direction, as we were saying before. Um, how we also support you to do that beyond the academic programs. Um, and a couple examples, sorry, um, of those programs. I mentioned the roads to business, so definitely check that out. We also have unique ways to combine all the different sciences into an honors program called Integrated Science Programs. Um, we have a highly specialized program um, in mathematics called Mathematical Methods of Social Sciences, kind of like a free economics approach to math. Um, so we, we have the traditional way of your academic components that you're But then we have some of those really unique ones. Another one I like to talk about is our creative writing major, um, which has produced writers like Veronica Roth, um, who wrote the book by Bridget in her senior year at Northwestern. So lots of those specialized programs you can find at Northwestern too. And how we help you find um, kind of your, your path um, alongside of your coursework is a lot of different innovative centers on campus um, or research centers. Some of the ones I like to talk about um, is uh, we have a center actually in San Francisco where students can do a term there. It's right on the water, it's quite beautiful. And um, anywhere, anyone from Medill or McCormick can um, do some, some interesting approaches to some of their learning experiences there. Um, we have um, our, uh, the garage, which is not a dingy place you park your car at Northwestern. I always like to make that little joke is that it's actually an incubator for startup companies. And we produ produced amazing um, companies joined by undergraduates and graduate students. We have a really amazing female-based entrepreneurship program called Propel. Um, and there's a lot of centers like this on campus in all different areas. Um, so I'm going to let Zach talk a little bit more about some of the others, as well as about some of those examples from his friend. Awesome. Thank you so much. So yeah, I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about all the out-of-class learning opportunities that are available at Northwestern. So the first one I want to talk about is research. Um, when a lot of students come to Northwestern, they're incredibly drawn to research and they want to figure out how to get going and how to do it immediately. Uh, and one thing I love to talk about is my freshman fall, I just took an introduction to psychology class. Of course, ended up mining in psychology a little bit later on, but literally within the first five minutes of taking this class at Northwestern, September of 2016, my professor said, by the way, we are looking for students in this class to come 
do research in our lab behind the scenes. And I was like, wow, like I'm 18 years old and I'm already being invited to do research here at Northwestern. And that opportunity is super common. Uh, and that's because every single year, Northwestern allocates over $3.5 million to undergraduate research. So that means that research is not only done in STEM. Of course, we have amazing STEM research opportunities, of course, uh, but we also have research opportunities in the humanities, in the social sciences, in the arts, in every single type of field out there. If you wanna do research on it and you wanna figure out what the forefront of knowledge is, go do it, go find it, and Northwestern will help you along the way. So with that being said, I wanna talk a little bit about my friend, Jonathan. Uh, his junior summer, instead of doing an internship or doing something you know, different, uh, he decided he wanna pursue his interest in drone strikes. Uh, I don't know why he's interested in this, but he's super passionate about this field of expertise uh, within political science. So we got a $3,500 undergraduate research grant or URG as it's called, and he decided to analyze the effectiveness of drone strikes in the Middle East while debating this with the moral complications of them. He got a ton of research done. He was super proud of it. And he ended up rolling over his research as well. Uh, and it ends up becoming a senior thesis just a few months later. Uh, it was incredibly awesome to watch a senior thesis over Zoom, of course, because of the pandemic, uh, because I saw where he was just a year ago and I knew what steps he was taking all along those nine to 10 or so months. Um, so if you're interested in research, Northwestern has them. But beyond that, we have so many different types of research, sorry, so many different types of other uh, academic and learning opportunities as well. So with that, I wanna talk now about our international experiences that Northwestern absolutely caters to. Uh, about 35 to 40% of our students here at Northwestern will study abroad during one of their four years. Uh, typically they're junior fall, but you can really do it whenever you want outside of freshman fall or freshman winter or freshman spring. Uh, when you can't you know, study abroad your freshman year, of course. Uh, but with over 170 different programs directly related to Northwestern or affiliated with Northwestern, you can really have any type of international experience you could possibly ever want. Uh, you can also do some really cool research and um, opportunities abroad as well. For example, my friend Mary, her junior fall, she actually went to Geneva, Switzerland. And with that being said, she actually interned or did research uh, with the World, World AIDS Society or the World AIDS Foundation. I forget the exact name, uh, but she was analyzing uh, further ways to eradicate HIV slash AIDS all across the globe. Uh, she did this while taking classes in Geneva, which was sick. Uh, I was super jealous of her and she just had a really cool, amazing opportunity. Uh, she studies both economics and global health and she has a huge interest in healthcare and how to reform it. Uh, and she got some really cool opportunities there just to put on a resume and to further her just overall sharpness in what she wants her future to look like. Uh, you can also actually um, intern abroad. Uh, that's a pretty cool opportunity that I don't know if that exists at other schools out there. Uh, but my friend Tyler, his junior summer, he actually worked out in Tel Aviv. He was working at a FinTech company and he actually didn't use his expertise to then go get a great consulting job uh, a few months after that. Uh, but of course you don't need to go abroad to get a great job. Uh, at the end of the day, Northwestern has so many different job opportunities for every type of student out there, whether you wanna go into investment banking or you wanna go work for the New York Times or you wanna work for Google, or you wanna, I don't know, go become a writer. Uh, every single type of opportunity Northwestern will offer you and help you get there. And that's because we have an absolutely incredible, um, what's it called, the, I'm completely blanking on the name, I apologize, but it's like, uh, career counseling office, don't remember the exact name here, um, but they will help you, you know, sharpen your resume. They will help you learn how to, you know, have an interview. They will help you learn how to, you know, talk to recruiters and even, um, and they will even help you figure out what clothes to wear, which is super helpful. And they even have a closet for students to pick out clothes um, if they can't quite financially have access to uh, the clothes that they may need for a different type of interview out there. Um, but at the end of the day, one statistic that I love to talk about is a 96% mark. Six months after graduation, on average, 96% of our students are either in graduate school or at a full-time job. So Northwestern will help you find a job and they'll help you get there. And then with that, you'll be happy. You'll make some good money. And um, Northwestern's education will truly um, come in handy. And I think that's honestly because we also have a huge alumni network, which I will turn now back to Christy to talk a little bit more about. Awesome. 
Yeah, I think with the, the acronym you were coming up with was NCA, the Northwestern Career Advancement. But they're also confusing because we have so many acronyms. Um, they're linked with our AAC, um, our Alumni Admission Council that we use in our office, as well as um, our international alumni networks too. So the alumni network at Northwestern is truly powerful and they're truly engaged. I went to um, a specific uh, uh, call or um, program uh, presentation with international alumni and they said that they're really looking forward to providing support for students what you need right now while you're a current student and what you need um, when you're done um, at Northwestern and continuing your career. So they're truly dedicated and our alumni are unique um, at Northwestern in the realm that we, those six colleges and schools produce really amazing outcomes um, in a really wide variety of careers. And so we have those famous celebrities that are always fun to talk about, like Julie Louise Dreyfus, Seth Meyers, and Stephen Colbert, dominating light night television there. Um, so those are always fun. Oh, we have George R.R. Martin, who came back for some fireside chats um, about Lord of the Rings. Um, but we also have leaders of industries, um, like Ginny Rometty at IBM, who gave our commencement speech a couple years ago. Gwen Shotwell, who's right up there um, uh, at, um, at SpaceX. Um, and then leaders of organizations that make a national, national impact, like Rosalind Brock at the NAACP. Um, one of my fun ones that I like to talk about, too, is checking out the Forbes 30 under 30 list. There's a lot of different types of lists, and one for social entrepreneurship is Audrey Chang. She's actually a young alumni who's founded a software and um, coding school in like three or four different countries now, but it's based in Nairobi. And one of our applicants actually did an internship there with her. Um, so I think it's really cool network to expand on um, and get you connected for the things that you want to do, um, both um, really famous alumni, as well as really amazing young alumni out there making an impact all over the place. Um, we do wanna understand a little bit more about the fun being had on campus, right? Um, that college also is um, very much a part of your social life, um, is part of how you impact and balance um, your success in the classroom. And since Zach is more of the expertise on this area, as I'm, I've been a, 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 um, away from university for quite a while, um, I'm going to let him chime in and tell you about the culture and community. If you can walk away from something, know this, Northwestern is a fun, fun school. Um, I'll say that. Uh, not only is it fun, but it's a happy and collaborative community. Uh, I just graduated, so I've been doing a lot of reflecting on what my Northwestern experience looked like and how I could describe it to, you know, people who didn't necessarily go to Northwestern, who, you know, I'll be coming in contact a lot with now that I've moved on to my next steps. Uh, and bear with me, this is going to be super cheesy, and I apologize for this, but if there were two words that I could use to describe Northwestern, it's collaborative and compassionate. So with that, I'll talk, sorry, col sorry, collaborative and um, compassionate. There was another word I'm blanking on, but it's okay. Um, so with that being said, when I was looking at lots of schools back in the day, um, I wanted to go to a top school where I could truly fall in love with my learning, really drive forward and just learn as much as I possibly can because uh, I just had a huge love of learning and I wanted to just be a good student. Um, but at the same time, I wanted to go to a school where at the end of the day, I didn't really feel like I was competing against other people. I wanted to go to a school where I could be my own person, where I could work to improve myself, but I didn't feel like I was going against everyone else. And with that being said, what I thought of Northwestern absolutely became alive here. Uh, like I said, we're not a sink or swim environment, but on the individual student level as well, students here just want to help one another out. They'll never push other people down and put themselves up. Uh, one of my best examples for this was when I was doing consulting recruitment about eight months ago, I was working with all of my friends preparing for interviews. At the end of the day, each of these jobs only had maybe two to three spots. And I was working with like five to six friends for each of these interviews to get prepared and to get ready. Not all of us were gonna get these jobs. We were theoretically kind of competing against one another, but it never really felt like that because we were always working together. Um, and we all got great jobs at the end of the day. And I know that's because we all just helped out one another and we helped just get ready for these honestly, pretty highly competitive jobs. Um, but then on the more compassionate side too, um, Northwestern is a Midwest school. Uh, coming from the East Coast, I'm from Boston. Um, it was definitely a little bit of a new world for me, a different change, as I'd like to say. Uh, but students here are just friendly and nice. And I think one of the biggest ways that Northwestern instills both collaboration and compassion uh, is through our orientation program called Wildcat Welcome, or the, um, 
where for about eight to nine days, um, instead of taking classes, uh, you will learn about Northwestern with a peer advisor and then about 10 to 15 other new students um, who together you'll learn, you'll sign up for classes together, you'll learn about Northwestern's culture, and you'll just do really fun things together. Uh, and this will honestly become your first friend group or your first family uh, at the university. But with this group, uh, you can then branch out and find other people in other communities. Uh, one thing that we love to talk about is that Northwestern has so many different centers for your culture, for your race, for your gender identity, your expression, whoever you name it, Northwestern will find a place for you and you'll be able to find your community there. Uh, so for example, my friend Jake, uh, he comes from Madison, Wisconsin from a relatively Jewish community. And when he came to Northwestern, he wanted to continue these values, continue this culture and just find a really great religious center. So with that being said, he then ended up joining the Hillel organization uh, and went to Friday Shabbat dinners every, every Friday there. Uh, and then he actually ended up joining the board of directors as the student representative a few years later. So he was able to easily find his community and find his home uh, that somewhat resembled uh, where he came from up in Wisconsin. Um, but no matter what community you become a part of, uh, you will come as a whole Northwestern uh, community for tons of different campus-wide events, whether those be Saturday football games in the fall or in the spring, we have a really incredible music festival called Armadillo Day or Dillo Day for short. This is actually the largest student-run music festival in the entire country where they'll bring in really cool artists like Chance the Rapper, Steve Aoki, Kendrick Lamar, Kanye West, I don't know how we get these people, but they come to our campus and we have an absolutely incredible time. Uh, this is about nine days before our spring finals begin every year. But, be, but despite this fact, uh, our president, Morty Shapiro, will always state that he does not want to see a, a single student studying on Dilla Day. And they actually close every single library on this day to ensure that students are out on the lake, having an incredibly fun time, living in the moment. Then of course, after this day ends, you can go back to your books and you can study and you can get ready for those finals. But I think this just perfectly encapsulates the Northwestern experience where you're gonna study hard, you're gonna be challenged and you're gonna really open, your, open new doors to incredible opportunities. But at the same time, you're gonna have a fun experience. You're gonna be able to live the college dream. You're gonna be able to find incredible collaborative kind people and you'll just be able to be a happy, well-rounded person, which I think is just so important when you're an 18 to uh, 22 year old, honestly. Um, but beyond that, um, I wanna talk a little bit more about our student organizations and student activities uh, that aren't necessarily academically oriented like I was talking about earlier. So we have over 500 different clubs uh, here at Northwestern, whether you wanna you know, join a video game club or you wanna get really into cooking or if you're 21, you wanna join a wine tasting club, no matter what you want, uh, Northwestern will have it. And in the rare opportunity that Northwestern doesn't have a club that you wanna join, all you have to do is find two other interested students, a faculty advisor to sign it off. And just like that, you made a new club and you're able to do really cool things. So for example, my roommate last year, Saren, uh, he has a ton of interest in sustainable energy and he wants to actually go work for a solar company one day. So because of this, he actually created this, um, the Renewable Energy Club here at Northwestern. And then in the fall, he got 200 people to sign up for it, just like that. He was super excited about this opportunity. Of course, he just graduated, so he passed the torch on to a younger student. But no matter where you are at Northwestern, no matter how old you are, uh, you can create something and you can just further your passions and do something incredibly cool. And one of the last things I want to talk about before I hand it back to Christy to talk about admissions and financial aid is I want to talk about Evanston and Chicago a little bit more specifically. Um, our clubs really do thrive because we have both the Evanston community and the Chicago community. Uh, we're only about 40 to 45 minutes away from Chicago. So we're literally minutes away from a world-class city. Uh, as I like to say, it's the second best city in the world after Boston, of course. Um, but no matter what, you can find really great sporting events there. You can go out and eat. Uh, you can go out to a ton of cool museums that Northwestern will often subsidize or bring you to for free. Um, and you'll just have a great time. So with that, I'll turn it back to Christy again. Great. Thank you, Zach. Um, so yeah, you definitely started about um, our, our location trifecta is what I like to call it. When I travel around the globe and get people kind of acclimated to where we are. Um, I think there, there's no place like Northwestern. Um, there's very few universities that have kind of that 
residential community, you know, when you're on campus and when you're off, there's no roads that go through campus. So you're not really dodging cars, um, more wildlife and things like that. Um, the entire eastern border of campus is Lake Michigan. And so it's quite beautiful. We actually have more coastal miles in the city of Chicago than San Francisco. That's your fun fact for the day. Um, and um, in Evanston, um, it really allows you to have a college town experience as Zach touched on with lots of discounts and fun stuff to, um, to partnership with the Evanston community. I like to tell the story about how um, a group of engineers during their design thinking and communication course actually redesigned a, 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 a fire truck that was retired from the Evanston Fire Department into a um, playground. So really cool little projects as well as like lots of tutoring and um, exciting cultural um, uh, engagement in the city of Evanston too. The city of Evanston is also um, the first over the border from the city of Chicago. Um, so the town of Evanston, if you will, is part of the North Shore. It's a highly reputable, beautiful place and an area in the, the Chicago land area. Um, and we have these beautiful mansions along this Lakeshore Drive, a real historic part of town. Um, but that continues into the city of Chicago. And you have those two different uh, methods of transportation. So you have um, your, um, you actually have three different ones. The Northwestern Shuttle is for Northwestern exclusively for staff, students, and faculty. And that'll take you from our campus in Evanston, which is our primary campus, to the heart of the city, which is where our Feinberg School of Medicine, our College of Law, lots of internships and research centers. Even if you're not a graduate student, you can tap into a lot of those networks. And through those Chicago field studies that Zach talked about earlier, um, it really whisks you back and forth quite, quite successfully. But we also are on the purple line of the L, which is the elevated train in Chicago. Um, we don't call it the subway. If you ask somebody where the subway is in Chicago, you're going to end up getting a $5 foot long, right? Um, we call it the L, the elevated train. Um, and we just happen to be on the purple line. I don't know if that's named for Northwestern, but I like to pretend it is. And then we also have the Metra, which will get you back and forth and further into the suburbs. So those two major public transportation systems of the city of Chicago is really like the lifeblood um, that gets you anywhere around. So it makes it the international city of Chicago really at your fingertips. So I like to say there's very that have an international city like Chicago with two major international airports, a ton of industry. We're second only to New York with the most Fortune 500 companies in one location. Um, and um, Evanston uh, was your college town experience, lots of purple pride there and discounts for students, but then your walkable campus feeling too. Um, so I just wanted to brag a little bit extra on our location and that trifecta, um, but let's get into admission and financial aid because that's the nuts and bolts of what we do in our office. I forgot to say in the beginning that each one of you actually has one of us in the Office of Undergraduate Admission. We are real life people on the other side of this somewhat ambiguous and stressful process of applying to university. Um, so just know that there is an actual human being that you can partner with or um, kind of reach out to um, in, um, in our virtual recruitment, uh, which is very different for everyone this year. Um, we are part of the common application as well as the coalition application. So that's how you would choose to apply to Northwestern. We offer fee waivers for a variety of reasons for students. So we don't want the application fee itself to become a burden to any student um, or even a barrier to applying, right? We want you to have that access to at least apply to Northwestern. And so you can utilize either of those two platforms. We don't have any preference on which one. Um, we have two different deadlines and these are more important to kind of hone in on and understand. Um, we have one that's November 1st, um, which is early decision. And then we have the second one, which is right around the 1st of January. I think it might be a little bit, a couple of days after this year, depending on where that lands on the calendar for regular decision. Um, early decision is for students that are doing their research early, that are um, really confident that Northwestern's the right match and fit for them. And they wanna express it in the most clear way possible to our admissions team. Um, because early decision is actually a binding program. So I like to say that early decision, the D in decision, is also in the word binding, right? Um, and so it's different than early action programs. Those are separate and available at other institutions. But early decision means that you're really confident, you're excited, um, you want to say that in the most clear way to us. Um, and if you apply early decision, you only apply to one school as early decision because you can only commit to one institution. And if you're admitted, then you're coming, right? And you're a Northwestern Wildcat and you have that purple pride already. Um, so we do really value students that are ready to make that expression of fit. Um, but any other student that may um, wanna take a little bit more time to research universities or perhaps um, are not admitted to their early decision option, 
um, we would ask you to apply regular decision, which is the bulk of our application. Um, we do take that early decision agreement pretty seriously, so, but we do have a smaller amount of applications during that. So it is a larger admission rate during that group. But then our regular decision program will have a larger number of applicants. Um, and of course, you get to decide um, based on your offers of admission where you're going to attend by May 1st. Um, so you have a little bit more time to decide which is the best fit for you after you get your admission decision. But another benefit of early decision is you get a yes or no or a defer. Um, and so you can have a more clear picture, perhaps, if you do have a, a denial decision to move forward with your next options and, and the others on your list. We really take holistic admissions very seriously. And that's a term you're going to hear a lot with highly selective institutions. So we receive over 40,000 applications a year. That's a lot, right? Um, for relatively few spots. Remember, we have about 2,000 students that march through that arch and join us in our freshman year, first year community. Um, so we need a lot of information in order to consider your context and your, your, your abilities and what you're contributing to our community. And so we dive into a lot. This year, because of unprecedented situations all over the world, we are SAT or ACT optional. If you have that to provide us, we're happy to take that if you believe it's an accurate description of your abilities. We have never um, um, in recent, in the last um, recent years, um, a required SAT two subject tests. But if you want to send them, you're welcome to. If you're showing off your expertise or proficiency in a specific area, if you're taking them for other schools, you can certainly send them. But again, those are optional always at Northwestern. This year, SAT or ACT is optional. What we really start to hone in on is your context. We want to understand more about your high school. We do that through your high school transcripts, as well as your recommendation letters and your high school profile. Um, we do that about which courses you decided to take and kind of what your expression of your um, expertise is in that. And um, we do see about 90 students that are admitted to Northwestern taking the most rigorous curriculum in their environment. Um, but that's in your environment, which might be different than another applicant from the town next to yours or from the state across the United States from you. So we really consider your context and what's available to you. And we rely on your counselor recommendation for that. We want to know what's kind of available in your community and the impact you're having on your community. And then your teachers will write, we expect one teacher recommendation, probably from a core subject area, math, science, social science, or um, language in um, your junior or senior year. So maybe somebody that's taught you some of that higher level stuff. Um, and we want you to, we want to know what kind of learner you are. So we hope that they can tell us a little bit of a different narrative about you as a student. Um, through that, um, that teacher recommendation. About 90% of our students are taking, um, are, are placing in the top 10% of their, their class in high school. Um, but that differs based on every school too, because some schools don't rank and some schools have different um, curriculum available. So just keep that in mind that we are considering um, very highly qualified students to make sure they're successful at Northwestern. Those letters of support matter a lot. And then your essays, and your voice matter a lot. I can't emphasize this enough in the college admission process. And after being in college admissions for almost 14 years now, I can say that we really need to connect with you. And that's the one place where I get to pause as an admission officer and kind of listen to your story and your voice in your own way. Actually on my computer and kind of stopping going through all the other examinations and what you want to say. We have an important question on our application called why Northwestern? And that means a lot to us. Um, we have rephrased it this year a little bit more to be targeted to you, um, telling us what we're hoping to hear from you. Um, and we want to know what you want to achieve at Northwestern. How do you see Northwestern being a place where you're going to achieve your unique goals? And um, what about the resources, faculty, students, the student life um, inspires you to do that? So we really do expect you to be able to handily speak to you and, and Northwestern, not saying something you think we want to hear and not saying anything that can be repeated by one of your peers because each student's um, approach to Northwestern will be very different. Um, so we really can't emphasize enough to personalize that. We also have some other uh, essays that you'll, you'll um, write on behalf of the common application or coalition application that we highly value to understand your context and where you're coming from and a little bit about you as a life experience. So um, finally, I want to touch uh, briefly on financial aid. Um, we are a need-based institution, um, but we meet 100% of need for any student that's admitted to Northwestern. If you're an international citizen um, that does not have a citizenship, 
And we do have a, a need aware process because we have a limited budget for international citizens. But for domestic students, we don't at all consider in the process of applying or reviewing you for admission, how much you need or if you need financial aid for domestic students or US permanent residents, right? We believe that's a separate process. We believe whoever is most qualified under those um, previous criteria that I kind of outlined um, should deserve a spot at Northwestern and a place to study. And we wanna come alongside of each of those students and support them with whatever capacity financially that might be. Um, so that's what 100% need um, met means. Um, and we do that with no loans. So we're one of only about 14 schools nation out of 4,000 institutions that have made that commitment to students not take loans as part of that package to set you up for success afterwards. Um, so access is an incredibly important thing for us. If you want to get into that a little bit more and get kind of a forecast of what you might be looking at at Northwestern, we would very much suggest for early decision applicants, go online and check out the net, net price the net price cap calculator. Um, and um, we, sorry, my internet said it was just um, unstable, but hopefully you can still hear me. Um, the, um, the net price calculator is available to all students and it's gonna ask you to input a lot of information about your family's financial background. And then it'll give you a projection of what you might um, uh, be looking at paying. That's a projection. And um, again, we wanna work with any student that's admitted to Northwestern to make sure we can understand your family's financial context. So any student, for, for instance, that applies early decision, we'd expect them to appeal um, so we can work with you and make it possible for you to attend. But that's a little snapshot of um, financial aid. It just means that um, six in 10 students, um, six out of 10 students on average at Northwestern receive some sort of financial assistance. And we've given out over $200 million in financial aid budgets um, in the last couple of years. We're also 20% um, Pell eligible at Northwestern. So we have a huge population of students coming from um, any background um, and making it possible to be successful at Northwestern. So um, I could go on for that because I'm a little passionate about that because I work with our international financial aid students. But um, we're going to jump into some Q&A. Um, I hope I covered enough of your admission. There's always nuanced questions. But let's start off with Zach since I've been talking for a little bit. Maybe it's good to hear from him. There's a really great one that I'm going to pull up here. Um, one student asked, Zach, um, how would you finish the following sentence? Um, mm. The one thing that you need to know about Northwestern, but won't find out until you actually get here is, so fill in that blank, Zach. All right, so the one thing you would want to know about Northwestern, but won't figure out until you start here. That's a good question, all right. Yeah, right? I mean, let, give, give me a few seconds to think about that one. Yeah. I think, do I want a qualitative or quantitative answer to this one? You can do both. <laughs> True. So, all right. So one thing that this is going to be a little bit of a piece of advice that I didn't follow at Northwestern, but most do. And I highly recommend that you do. Um, at Northwestern, you do not need to come in with a plan at all. And even if you do have a plan, you do not need to stick to it super tightly. So once I figured out I wanted to be an econ major and I wanted to go into business, and I wanted to go into consulting, I somewhat stuck on a straight path, um, but you do not need to do that at Northwestern. You can find a lot of creative fun opportunities. You can just jump outside of your comfort zone and take somewhat random classes that don't necessarily align with what you're thinking about in your future or what you already know everything about. So at Northwestern, a really important thing to know is there's a ton of creative freedom and a ton of creative opportunities to jump outside your comfort zone, take weird things, do cool things, and still be incredibly successful. And that's one of the biggest parts about Northwestern, I'd argue. Great. Um, there's a lot of questions for you, Zach, so get ready. Um, I'm ready. What are some of the traditions that students at Northwestern partake in? I know you mentioned a few, like Dillo Day. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah. I mentioned March Through the Arts, which is a special joining ceremony. Um, yeah. Is there anything else that's kind of like different or one of your favorites? Yeah. Um, so my personal favorite was uh, during orientation or Wildcat Welcome, as we call it, uh, on the very first football game that you get to go to and get to for free, of course, uh, you actually run onto the field with the 2,000 so other new students, all 40,000 people in Ryan Field are just clapping for you, excited that you've entered a Northwestern community. Uh, so that's a really fun uh, tradition that students get to partake in uh, once they become official Wildcats. 
Uh, another one of my favorite traditions is the rock. Uh, this is kind of random, but we have this super big rock right plopped in the center of campus. And what you do is you'll guard it for 24 hours. And once you guard it, you, you can then paint it however you like. So if you want to, you know, promote a new club or if you want to promote people doing something or coming to something, or if you just want to put your name, or if you want to ask someone to become your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, uh, you can paint it on this rock. Uh, and this is a tradition that's gone on for literally 50 or so years. And there are literally 10 inches of paint into the rock, just so many layers of paint. Uh, and that's one of my favorite traditions that I was able to do actually three times here at Northwestern. Yeah, and there's a rock cam if anybody wants to shut uh, at least at last I looked. So there's a live feed on the rock at all times that you can can kind of see what's happening. Um, okay, um, another one. Um, are students involved in the surrounding community in Evanston oh, yeah. or in Chicago? Oh yeah, absolutely. So of course, just casually, it's so easy to go to either Evanston Center or into Chicago. Um, but there are also so many clubs at Northwestern. Um, I failed to touch on this earlier that actively work with both the Evanston and Chicago community. So whether you want to get into community service or if you want to work for a club that consults with local businesses or if you want to, you know, go work for a foundation, um, there are so many ways to easily just get involved in Evanston, get involved in Chicago and really become a part of both communities as well. Awesome. Um, I think we skimmed over a little bit of uh, residence life. So can you tell us a little bit about like both the first year experience, but also res life? Yeah, absolutely. So um, for uh, uh, every freshman or every first year will um, live on campus, which is super awesome because we have a ton of different living opportunities with a ton of different types of dorms, whether you want to live in a suite or if you want to live in a double, or if you're incredibly lucky, you may even get a single as a freshman, but don't count on it. That's a pretty, pretty rare opportunity for students. Um, but one of my favorite parts about dorm life that I got to partake in my freshman year was that every single week, the people who are in charge of the dorm will do something for you, whether that be bringing in pizza for you on a Thursday night, or whether that be taking you to uh, the field museum for a spring formal. Uh, there are just so many ways to get to know the people within your dorms uh, to create these really close connections. And like I said earlier, there's a ton of ways to find your families or your communities. And one of the easiest ways is just to really vibe with the people who are living right next to you. Uh, and we have a two-year live-in requirement. So whether you want to live in dorms or if you end up uh, living in fraternity or sorority housing your sophomore or junior year, uh, that will also fulfill the requirement. Uh, a lot of juniors and seniors will typically move off campus, but Honestly, when I lived off campus, I was 30 seconds away from all of my classes. Uh, it really felt like I was still on campus every day. And, you know, you're still very genuinely uh, a member of the community, whether you live on or off campus. Nice. Yeah, I think you speak to that well. And one of the other questions that also kind of jumps into this is that um, how does Northwestern help its students discover their passions? And what part of Northwestern experience would you say most define students' characters? I think that, that that live on experience and living in our communities and how we foster those communities are really important. Um, we do a lot, I think what you're saying about the events each week at Northwestern that is strategic and to start from first year. Even our, our Office of Undergraduate Research, they were um, tasked with, with targeting first and second year students because that's where people may not be as familiar with research or kind of, um, uh, may feel less confident in how to write a research proposal. So Northwestern as an organ as a as a university decided let's target that group and let's put funding towards that group specifically to kick them off into this um, and propel them forward successfully at an earlier spot. So I think Northwestern does have a lot of that strategic strategic edge in targeting your first and second year experience. And that's why we also want you to live in our community for the first and second year. Uh, so residents, um, you will be living on campus for your first and second year at Northwestern. Um, but we view that as a way to just like invest in you and very straight. Um, so answer for that. I don't know. Is there other ways that you think students are helped to discover their passions, Zach? Yeah, um, with over 500 clubs, um, it's super easy to get involved. Um, one of my most vivid memories was my freshman fall. I went to the new student and, and activities fair, which was on the first and second day of classes. And I kid you not, I literally signed up for 50 clubs within my first 24 hours of taking classes. Uh, so then I got 50 emails from 50 different lift service the next day, inviting me to all these different communities. Uh, of course, I was initially overwhelmed, 
But then I was able to talk to all these different people within these organizations and slowly deactivate from about 47 of those 50 listservs as I figured out what I want my Northwestern experience to look like. Uh, at the end of the day, every single student who's older than you wants to help you out. Uh, again, collaborative community. Uh, you're gonna just find so many older mentors at the school will, who will help you find these interests, these passions, and will guide you along the way. So again, easy to just find your passions and get involved at the school. Yeah, and I think we, we do that strategically both in the fall quarter, but winter quarter. So we actually have delayed recruitment for fraternities and sororities. But one of my favorite things about fraternity and sorority life, um, one of the students that worked in our office, um, she was the president of her sorority, and she said every single student that's, that was registered as a member to her sorority and fraternity, that, um, they indicated the other organizations they are part of at Northwestern, and every single student listed at least three to five other organizations. So it's an incredibly dynamic, um, passionate place, and people aren't just passionate about, uh, about one thing or have one identity, right? They commit to a lot of different things and that can evolve over time. So our delayed recruitment is in the winter, but also those, the student activity fairs can filter into the winter or you can go your following year. So you can continue to get plugged in as you adjust to campus and continue to kind of expound upon those interests or discover new ones. And I think that's that's the beauty that I witnessed of like the, the work hard, play hard attitude at Northwestern of just like really getting out there um, there's one more question about what school spirit events or activities are the most popular or prominent. And Zach, I think we answered this right in the start with Wildside. I don't know about you, but can you think of any other organization that's more spirited than, than your experience with Wildside? No, I mean, I can't. The only answer is just the overall community in general. Um, it was easy to be a member of Wildside because students just in general are super hyped up about Northwestern sports and the Northwestern community. Uh, Saturday tailgates and football games are literally just so much fun going out, cheering on the cats. Um, my favorite memory at Northwestern was my junior year. Uh, the Wildcats actually made it to the big 10 championships. Unfortunately, we lost to Wisconsin on that day. So we didn't get the, you know, big 10 crown, uh, but Northwestern rented 60 different coach buses and purchased 5,000 tickets for Northwestern students to go to Indianapolis, have a ton of fun. They even gave us free food out there. Uh, and that was just one of the best days ever where you truly felt your Northwestern community just absolutely come alive. Awesome. Yeah, that's some special memories, loading up those buses and sending off the entire student body down to Indianapolis was a pretty cool. There's not too many universities that can, can organize to do that. And our excitement and our passion at Northwestern and Purple Pride, but we have that same Purple Pride around all the theater performances and musicians and um, everything at Northwestern. So it's a pretty exciting place. Um, so we have um, one more thing that I wanted to touch on is just um, everybody, I think, in the admission world and students facing the admission process are a little bit nervous about the pandemic and kind of um, just everything that's different than past years. And we want you to know it's different for us as well. Um, you're joining me here in, in my house. Um, my dog is actually sleeping over there. Maybe he'll um, come and make an appearance in a moment. Um, but we know that um, this year, more than any year, context is important. But the lucky thing about Northwestern is the highly selective admission review. We've never just picked the students with the highest test scores because those don't make the, the most interesting roommates or lab mates or leaders of organizations, right? We have to go beyond that in our applicant pool because of how competitive and how compelling a lot of these applicants are. And so we've had a lot of practice at, at examining that context and diving into the holistic review. So I know everyone's nervous and I understand that that's a valid feeling, but we just really wanna reassure you that um, we've had a lot of practice at this because of our place um, in higher education. We are so privileged um, to have such a talented student body, but we define talents in so many different ways and we defined um, becoming part of the Northwestern community um, in a lot of different ways. So just. Just know that the holistic contextual review is something that we have been born and bred to do. Um, and so we want to continue to do that. Um, finally, let's um, just make sure that um, you um, register for student panels. If you wanna hear more from students in a less casual uh, or less formal presentation, we have student panels. We also have office hours that you can touch on. Um, so. We have a lot of really good stuff on there. There's an interview with the president. There's an interview with the football coach. Um, there's all kinds of fun stuff that we've tried to glam up for you um, on, 
on virtual um, learning. So um, we just want to thank you for your our, your time today um, and recognize that you're coming to us from all over the world. So it's noon here in Chicago. It's about 80 degrees or 26 degrees Celsius. Um, we're loving summer here. Um, and we just thank you so much for sharing bits of your time and your day um, wherever you are. Um, so I think that's a wrap. Did I forget anything, Zach? Um, that's really about it. I would say if there's any good component of the pandemic, it's that all of our information is now online. It's never been more accessible. So I highly uh, suggest that you check out all these videos, check out our Instagram, learn as much as you can, reach out to us, email us. We love getting in contact with all of you. Um, just there's uncertainty for sure, but uh, we're definitely here with you every step of the way. Oh. And Harold says hi, too. This is my dog. Um, but we, yeah, we understand that everything's different this year. And we just want to know that we're right there with you. And our senior counselors like Zach are tremendous assets and 